All right, guys. Today I got a treat for you. At least for those with an open mind, uh, what I'm going to attempt to do here is use the Bible to prove evolution, and I'm going to use science to prove uh, the possibility of creation, which is what should uh, interest you in somewhat. Uh, if somebody had said this to me, you know, ten years ago, I'd have laughed at them. But you know, when you start thinking for yourself. You, you can kind of start putting the pieces together for yourself. You don't have to be told what to think anymore. That's that's a beautiful thing. Anyways, let's get started. Uh, and God said, Let the earth bring forth grass. And God said, Let the waters bring forth and God said let the earth bring forth it doesn't say that he created them it says let the earth bring forth now the only thing that actually explicitly says that was created was man Sorry, I don't have a mouse. This is difficult. And even more interesting, it says us. An hour. Again, hour. So apparently there's more than one. That should, that should at least make you start thinking uh, what the hell is going on here. Just this verse alone should make you think what is going on here um, now to use science to prove the possibility of creation let's do that glowfish genetically modified organisms what got me on this was uh, I am a I'm a fan of fish I have tons of fish I got three tanks in my house I guess that's the way to bring nature indoors if you can't live outdoors. But I had bought some uh, some glowfish, and as with all my fish purchases, when I bring them home, I do uh, extensive research on them to find out, you know, the best care, the best um, environment to give them. And I noticed that they were genetically modified. These things did not evolve. They didn't. They didn't evolve and they reproduce on their own um, they will reproduce glowfish in fact if you're caught breeding them you can be sued because they are patented this animal is patented so if you're caught breeding glowfish you can be sued and you can go to jail now what they did was is they mixed coral um, they mixed a this is what they originally looked like and what they did was they took uh, DNA from coral and jellyfish. Um, see if I can find that in here real quick. Uh, anyways, they inserted the gene. That's basically what I want to get to. Is they have inserted the gene into this fish to create a new fish um, that, like I said, didn't get here by evolution. There is no evolutionary process for this. The way this happened, and what this shows me is that there is an interchangeability within DNA meaning that it could very well be built um, if you can interchange the parts from one species to another species then it's almost like a car and uh, all they did was switch out a hose or a belt and uh, they changed the species like I've made the uh, connection with um, DNA and computer programs where you know ones and zeros <clears throat> are kind of like the A, C, T's, and G's of DNA, whereas the ones and zeros are for 2D programs. You have the A, C, T, and G for uh, 4D replica, uh, self-replicating robots. Basically, is what we are. I mean, think about that for a minute. We are basically trying to create robots today that will create robots, and it's already been perfected. <laughs> 
it's already it, we are we're already here you know we um, we can repair ourselves uh, depending on the damage and uh, we have offspring so we're already we already have the most efficient uh, machine or robot on the planet and uh, that's us basically moving on there's more evidence for this and I'm gonna get into that now man-made man-made elements if man can make just one element then in my mind it's possible that all elements could have been made um, granted some of these are naturally found and some of them aren't but the fact is is that we can make the most basic building structure um, we can make the most basic uh, you know that we can make an element if we can make one element I you know I don't know how else you can come to a conclusion other than if we can make one then it's possible that they were all made uh, by something that was far more intelligent than us I mean if we can create species and this is just the a track of creation um, we we've gone from what a tracks to 3d blu-rays in a matter of a couple decades Think, think of uh, the glowfish as the 8-track of creation. Just, uh, you know, scratching the surface, getting to understand the science uh, behind that. And like I said before, there's evidence all throughout history of this genetic modifications from centaurs <coughs> to um, Anubis. Uh, you have the bird-headed Egyptians, Medusa. I mean, there, there are tons of uh, folklore and... Uh, Tons of old stories that just pretty much kind of hint to transhumanism <clears throat> and genetic modifications, uh, as it was in the days of Noah. Uh, we uh, we are pretty much playing God at this point, and I'm going to end this uh, with a fairly fairly new article. It's not that new, but it's fairly new. So within the last three years, I'm sure they've gone far much further than this, but yeah, they've uh, they've basically made human sperm and eggs in a lab. <clears throat> and for a scientist to say that creation is impossible or unlikely when they themselves are doing it, it's uh, I don't know. You just gotta kind of look at it like uh, they have tunnel vision. They they definitely have tunnel vision. Um, and I don't have a problem pointing that out because I'm not, like I said, for popular opinion. Um, this is just basically to open your, your eyes and to help help you look at a different side of the cube. Stop staring at the corner. Notice the walls around you, the ceiling. Step outside the box. You can't just go along with mainstream people, man. People who put on jerseys and root for their team. You just you got to ignore those people. Especially when there's evidence to the contrary. I, mean, I can't tell you how many times I've heard a story of a, a scientist who have created species that did not exist simply by misplacing a bone. Uh, or, a, a, you know, how many species have been created, how many dinosaurs have been created that didn't ever exist, ever walk the earth just because they misplaced a bone or put this bone in with the wrong animal. I mean, it goes down through the line, man. If you do your own research on uh, on the evolutionary science, it, it's, it falls apart. It does. And I'm not trying to just say that to, to, to you know, I'm not, I'm not a hardcore Christian. I'm not a hardcore atheist. I'm not a hardcore agnostic. I'm just an open mind. And I'm looking at it, uh, I'm looking at it very critically. I'm not jumping on the bandwagon, if you will. Um... the the fossil record is incomplete don't sit here and tell me we have a fossil record it's incomplete um, less than one one hundredth of one percent of all species will be uh, fossilized and even less will be complete fossils um, to say that we have a, a fossil record that that shows evolution is just it's ridiculous it's like taking a ten thousand page book and ripping out nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine pages and telling you to read me the story you're not going to be able to do it. 
You can make up the story as long as you're receiving grants. That's why I say money's a problem, man. If scientists were just entirely uh, volunteer and there was no motivation behind it, um, then we'd probably get some truth. But we're not getting any truth because these people, they either say what they're told to say or they lose their grant money. Or they make up stuff so that they can receive grants. Um, there was a um, story of a guy who had a Clovis point and he threw it in a ditch somewhere and he's like, oh, the Clovis people were here. They were here. I need grant money to dig into this. And, you know, all the while he put the Clovis point there just so he could get some more grant money. And there's endless stories of this. Carbon dating is a joke. I mean, you go through the whole line. It's just hilarious. Uh, what people call facts these days. Um, but, I, you know, I'm not going to get too much into that. Uh, you got to do your own research, man. I can't tell you what to believe. And um, nobody's going to tell me what to believe, that's for sure. And if you don't believe any any words of what I just said, that's fine. It's your prerogative. I'm not... I'm not here to beat it into your head. I'm just hopefully helping you to to not just be a part. I mean, you see it on YouTube. It's like there's two sides, man. It's just the creation side and there's this evolution side. And there's a there's a middle ground. There's a there's other places to look too. There's not just you know it's not just two stories here that we have to choose from. Make your own story up. I don't care. But uh, you know the the, the herd mentality's got to go. Anyways, thanks for listening, guys, and uh, I hope I've opened your eyes to something. Uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm not attacking anybody. If, if you are uh, an atheist or a Christian or anything, I, you know, that's your prerogative. I'm not attacking you. Thanks for listening.